you must make the perceived value of what you're asking people to do greater than the perceived cost. And I hope to show you some examples later on of how this has been tackled in the past. Not enormous success, but at least the effort has been made. Let me give you an instance. There was a protein biscuit that was being uh, marketed in Argentina. It was an excellent biscuit. It contained minerals and vitamins. But it was doing extremely badly because the biscuit was being advertised as containing this protein and that mineral and those, and those vitamins. Until it occurred to somebody to get Maradona to provide a testimony of the biscuit. He appeared on television saying, I eat this biscuit, it's great. Try it. And that was all. The sales government like that. Why? Because the perceived value of that biscuit became higher than perceived cost. What is marketing and, uh, and, uh, and, and development up against? Now, in commercial marketing, what you're up against, of course, is competition. In social marketing, you're up against competition as well. Now, though that competition is the competition that arises from the resistances in people's heads. They don't want to use that particular kind of a tree. They don't want to put in a ladle into water so as to keep it hygienic. They don't want to draw on the condom. How do you get over those resistances and constraints? How do you, how do you increase the value of wearing a condom when people's resistances are, I do not, not enjoy the sex act, men don't wear condoms and all the rest of it. So you're up against all that when you're, when you're in, in social marketing. Marketing has to distribute. I don't need to go into details. Sales management looks after it. Commercial marketing, in social marketing, hospitals, schools, primary health centers are your retail points where your product, the one that you have devised, that you have confected, is going to be distributed. What is the profit in commercial marketing? Of course, it is the PL and your share price. In uh, social marketing, it is the social effect established via. Um, by uh, evaluation. In other words, marketing theory may be too good to waste on soap. Mr. Chairman, sir, if you would give me a little more time, I would like to go into a few examples of uh, this theory put into practice, with which I personally happen to be involved. You mentioned, sir, my stay in Brazil happily. Uh, one of the instances that I'm about to place before you relates to Brazil. It uh, has to do with the promotion of breastfeeding in Brazil. There was a calamitous decline in the breastfeeding practice in Brazil, despite every effort made by uh, forces of great eminence, the church, the ministries of health and social welfare, the medical uh, profession, on and on. And yet, breastfeeding continued to decline fewer and fewer women were breastfeeding for shorter and shorter periods. When marketing and advertising people arrived on the scene, the first thing they did was to commission uh, an ambitious research study. No longer was the program going to be determined by the hunches of pediatricians and the clairvoyance of bureaucrats. What emerged was that we had been involved in an extensive and elaborate bout of victim blaming. In other words, the mother, our target mother, who was lower income, was already desirous of breastfeeding her child uh, for six months and more. But what came between the child's lips and the mother's breast were a whole concatenation of things which really, if we could get the sun down off, they might be able to see. Thank you. Now, I'm not showing that to you to tell you how clever we were in clicking that problem or to depict our state of mind at the time, but to break that up like this. Marketing people looked at the mother. What is the mother's attitude and opinion? What are her maternal reflexes? 
exactly what motivates maternal behavior. We found that that behavior was to some extent ruled by what was going on in the health sector, what the doctor advised, what the health services were doing in the prenatal care, what was happening in the hospital. We looked at what was happening in the mother's environment. We looked at what the government was doing. We looked at the community support that she was getting. We looked finally at industry where mother was employed and where was lodged competition, the infant food industry and what they were doing. What became perfectly clear is that if we were to have any program at all, we had to tackle all of those things. And it's only a marketing mind ruling this program that said we've got to do it all. Otherwise, we don't have a program. Why? Because as in everyday marketing, every factor is touched, is influenced by every other factor. So you needed a, a, a total program or you had none at all. Oh, not bad. There was a great deal that went on in this program, ladies and gentlemen. Training, contact with, uh, with, with employers, on and on. But in the end, what delivered, in the end, what brought the mother back to the breast, the other way around, what brought the baby back to the breast, was the advertising. Now the advertising, the, the product that was evolved in the Brazil breastfeeding program, was made up of two ingredients, confidence, confidence in the mother's head that yes, she could breastfeed, and yes, the quality of her breast milk was good enough, and secondly, the knowledge of how to breastfeed. This was the confection that we evolved, and then, of course, you had to give it, uh, add value to that, and we added value by calling into play the superstars of Brazil at the time the stars of uh, screen and television, the stars from football. It is they who added value to what in the end could be seen as an animal act, traditional and, and the rest of it. Uh, Ilango, I'm wondering whether if we could have that off again, whether we couldn't have the first spot. Oh, wait a minute, before you do that, the first spot that you're going to see is of a very macho musician, Carlos, in. Um, in Brazil, uh, who donated the music that became the theme music of the program. And what he says is, I wrote this music for women who do such a great job. This is look at my wife, for example. She looks after the house, the food, my friends, and also the kids. Of course, she breastfed them. OK. Thank you. The second spot uh, is is who now? The second spot uh, is yes, is Socrates. Now Socrates was the captain of the Brazil World Cup football team at the time, and the captain of Brazil's World Cup football team in Brazil is God. Now, Brazil also, uh, Socrates at that time, was also a doctor. So he could speak with some authority to um, men. And that's what he did. He addressed fathers. He said, look here, fathers. You must do as I did. Insist on breastfeeding. My wife has done that. I've got four sons. Do it. OK. Thank you. Uh, please. Doctor Socrates, quantos filhos? What? Meninos ou meninas? Nossa, todos homens? Todos. Fala com o pai. Seus filhos foram amamentados? Foram sim. A minha mulher fez questão. E você? Apoiou? Claro. Só o leite materno dá imunidade para a criança. Olha, 
Amamentar não é fácil, mas é tão importante que deveria ser obrigatório. Amamentação. Seis meses que valem uma vida. Orientação com o um serviço de saúde. Now, one of the points that both uh, Carlos and uh, Socrates made is that breastfeeding is not easy. Look, they say, it's not easy, but for heaven's sake, keep at it, because its benefits are so fantastic. This is the point that will be made by both the women you're going to see. Uh, both of them say, look, I also thought I couldn't breastfeed. I also was wondering about the quality of my breast milk. But I did it, and my sisters, please do as I did. Uh, and when you know you, could, you get these women who could afford the best, the last toilet soap uh, argument. Here are these women, women who, could, who, who could, uh, can afford the best. Uh, that's what they're saying. They must be right. The next one is an actress who bared her breast for the first time in public. And in Brazil, you know, there's absolutely no fuss. They just uh, undo the, the bra and out pops the breast, and out pops the breast into uh, the child's mouth. So this is Maria Zilda. Uh, a superstar uh, who says, I wasn't sure I could breastfeed Rafael, but I did. Okay. Antes do Rafael nascer, eu estava em dúvida se eu poderia amamentá-lo. É lógico que eu queria muito, sabia que era importante, mas eu estava meio insegura, eu não tinha certeza se eu ia conseguir. No começo foi um pouquinho difícil, mas depois foi ficando muito fácil. Olha, não pare nas primeiras semanas. É importante amamentar vários meses. Amamentação. Seis meses que valem uma vida. Orientação com o serviço de saúde. E eu prometo que esse é o último. Essa outra superstar, ela diz que ela faz um apelo para os empregados, para a indústria. Diz: Listen, you uh, personal directors of factories and, and companies, for heaven's sake, can't you look after your women? Can't you assure them security of job? Can you not ensure that they will get their paid uh, nursing breaks, which the law enjoins? Please observe the law. Uh, that's what she says. And uh, the effect of these spots, believe me, was electric. Four years after these spots were run and stopped being run, the Socrates spot was remembered. The spot that you're about to see was remembered. The words were played back. And I want to say one thing about this. It, it, they were a marketing man's package of spots. Each one tackled a separate audience. Each one made a separate point, but under a unifying umbrella that line at the bottom says, breastfeeding, six months that are worth a lifetime. Let's run the last one, Rafa. Aliás, eu queria fazer um pedido a você, patroa, a você, chefe de pessoal, a você, empresário. Facilitem os horários de amamentação das mulheres que trabalham fora. Os nossos bebês agradecem. Né, Pedrinho? Amamentação. Seis meses que valem uma vida. Orientação com o serviço de saúde. Thank you, Rambo. Now, these spots defeated Nestlé. Um, they had Nestle, I wouldn't say on the run, but uh, really they troubled, Nestle, uh, they, uh, they troubled Nestle, but there was nothing that Nestle could say against them because they said nothing about their product. What we did here was promote and market for the first time breast milk. Uh, breast milk was a great product and the packaging is even nicer. Now, when, uh, the results. What happened? The median duration of breastfeeding between 19, uh, uh, National Breastfeeding Program, Brazil, the Green Line, median duration, Sao Paulo, Blue Line, under that, 1981, 1984, 1987, 88. In 1981, the median duration of breastfeeding was 60 days. By 1984, after this program, it doubled it to 120 days. Now, the proof of what was responsible for that success was that the television spots were taken off the air. There was disactivation of that red line. And within three years, the breastfeeding durations went back to the 1981 situation. Happily, the spots are on air again, new spots, and in fact, better ones. Um, systematic evaluation took place, and uh, this is uh, a very well-known study done on breastfeeding in Brazil. It says the city of Sao Paulo, with over 10 million inhabitants, appears to be the first large city in the third world 
where a reversal of the trend toward early reading has been documented. And it goes on to say, this evaluation of the media campaign's quality of the interviewee's opinion and the favorable results demonstrates the power and impact of television in changing values and habits. It was a huge success. Nothing great was done. It was just some marketing and advertising people who existed in Brazil brought in to help. Uh, now, we also used marketing and advertising tactics in the national technology missions with which, with which I was involved. Uh, in the drinking water mission, the idea was to brand safe water sources. The problem uh, we found with the drinking water mission was that people often went back to the old polluted sources because they didn't like the taste of the pure water coming from the hand pump. So the idea was to charge that water with sufficient value to overwhelm their natural resistance to the taste. There were all kinds of stories, oh, this water is salty, it doesn't cook well, and so forth. So the idea was, how do we invest that water with the right value? So uh, strategy two, which is the one adopted, brand safe water sources, proliferate use and display of, of uh, national drinking water mission logo, and all safe water sources, etc. Give the logo a name for quick identification and registration. The idea was to think of a spokesperson, a spokesperson who would be symbolic and larger than life, a spokesperson who would speak of the quality of hand pump water, and the idea that eventually was selected out of a variety was Dharti Ma. Dharti Ma became the spoke, Mother Earth, became the spokesperson appearing on the screen uh, to talk about the value of the water, and there were Dharti Ma stickers intended, they never did in the end go up, intended to be stuck on the, uh, the hand pumps. Uh, the benefits of Dharti Ma were. The second um, instance that I'd like quickly to place before you was the immunization uh, mission. The great breakthrough idea that HTA got was to transform something that was already happening. The problem was in the villages in the end. There were jeeps, there were paramedical workers going out to every village in a jeep with, the, with the, uh, a box. So what HTA said was, look, why don't we package that? Why don't we transform uh, that wretched, dull little event into something worthwhile, bring life to the village? So the immunization session in the village, an existing ongoing periodic local occurrence. Our proposal enhanced the status of the immunization session, make it an event, give it importance, a sense of urgency, credibility, etc. Transform it, make it Shishu Raksha Mela. So, the advertising for immunization in North India, in the end, was promoting the Mela. And what they said was, for heaven's sake, when these jeeps come, decorate the place, it is a health Mela. Um, now, I'll show you two spots. One uh, that uh, shows you a little bit of the Mela, but it will show you home.